Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining this lunchtime session. We're just going to give people uh, one or two minutes just to get connected to audio before getting started. I'm Sam from the Expense Plus team and I'm going to be uh, taking you through uh, this lunchtime session. This is our third uh, lunch and learn session. So if you haven't managed to join any sessions uh, yet uh, with us, you're really welcome. Thanks so much for joining us today. So these sessions are designed to give you a chance to find out a little bit more about how Expense Plus works, but also to help you think about how you can streamline um, the administration and kind of financial management of your church or charity. Now, this session is being recorded. However, you are not being recorded so please don't worry it's just myself and what you see on screen that's being recorded after the session we will send a link to the recording so you can watch any bits of the session that you want to catch up on or if there's someone in your team that wasn't able to join us today there's a number of people that haven't been able to join and would like to copy the recording so we will be sending that out later after this session has finished. At the end of the session, we will hopefully have time for a Q&A. Um, so if you do have any questions as we go through um, this lunchtime session, please do just pop them, pop your questions in the Zoom chat. You should be able to find that somewhere in your Zoom window and we'll cover your questions at the end. And it'll be great to also hear, um, hear from you as well. So I'll be asking you guys a few questions um, in that session as well. So um, we are gonna get started with today's Lunch and Learn. So for those who have just joined, um, I'm Sam from the Expense Plus team, and I'm going to be taking you through the session where we're going to be looking at the basics of donor management inside Expense Plus. We're going to be talking about donor communication, engagement, donor pledges. Um, these are some of the features that you will find within the Manage Donor module inside Expense Plus. We're also going to be looking at some of the brilliant donation reports and um, look at things like generating donor statements within Expense Plus as well. So stick with me and we'll cover that as well. We are then going to be looking at love giving and and claiming um, of gift aid within Expense Plus as well. Now, our aim is to finish by 1.30 at the absolute latest. I'm going to try and finish at least five minutes before that. Um, and but before that as well, we're going to have a chance to have a QA. and a um, So probably I should get started. Okay, I'm just going to move my notes. If just give me one second, we will get started. Great. So we are going to start by talking about the donor management screen inside Expense Plus, which is the screen that you should hopefully see. And um, you should hopefully see my mouse moving around. We're going to look at this screen first. And we're just going to start it with some of the basics, which I'm sure many of you will know, but then talk through some of the features that you may possibly not be familiar with, um, and hopefully this will be helpful. So with inside the Manage Donor screen, how do you get to the Manage Donor screen? You come to the sidebar menu here, and you come to the Manage Donor option on here. With inside the Manage Donor screen, you will come to this, uh, this screen, and there's different tabs across the top of the screen, which you may again have not spotted. We're gonna go through each of these in a moment. So within the donor details tag, which is the default um, donor details view, which is the kind of the default view for this screen, this is where we add donors, we can edit donors, we can merge duplicate donors, we can deactivate donors. And so let me just talk you through some of these basic features just as a bit of a warm up to get us started. So if we want to add a new donor, we can just simply click this add new donor and we can come in here and we can add um, in here. So we've got Dan James, we can just add Dan as a new donor and then we can click save um, and then we can then go and add further the details if we want to for this donor. So that's really easy for us to go ahead and do. Now, most donors actually probably are not going to get added from this screen. And that's because the first time you're going to know that you have a new donor is when they start giving to your church or charity. So you can also do what I've just done. You can add donors from within the um, bank matching screen, within the bank deposit screen, within the petty cash income screen. You can also add donors from those places as well. How do you edit a donor then? Well, you simply click on the donor that you wish to add, edit. So you click on the donor, you go to the section that you wish to add it, edit, maybe the address details, you click the edit button to the side, and then you can go ahead and edit the details. Again, there are different views inside the edit of a donor, which correspond to the same different views that you see with inside the manage donors screen. And we'll cover these so you'll feel more familiar with these in the next few minutes. The next option within here is import donors. Now, this is only useful if you're just getting started with 
expense plus it allows you to really efficiently download a template from uh from this pop-up which you can then complete by copying and pasting your donor data into and then you can upload it with a single click you shouldn't be doing this if you've already been using expense plus for a while this is just for um for when you're getting started with expense plus an efficient way to import new donors we're going to talk about applying donor tags in a second so just um just pause with that one we're going to move on to the other two options though first merge duplicates is a really useful feature where you've realized you've got two people that are the same people but maybe with different names that have been added more than once a merge duplicate is the way that you deal with that so if you go to merge duplicates you go and find your donor in fact let's just go and look at our duplicates that we're going to go and merge first so down here we have got yep here we've got we've got sam hill and we've got samantha hill they've even got the same address so we know that they are duplicates in here we can go ahead and click merge duplicates we can search for sam in here we can search for samantha in here so we're going to keep the first one are they the same donor yes and then we can click submit and that's merge those two records together so merge duplicates is very useful if you do end up with more than one record for a particular donor Manage deactivated then. So once, uh, if you don't want to have a donor on this screen, you can either delete them if they've never given to your church or charity, or if they have given, you can deactivate them by clicking this button. So this is useful if you think that they're not going to give again, or maybe they've um, they've moved to a different place, then you can go ahead and deactivate them here. You can also see you're deactivated within here and reactivate them if you would like. So hopefully that makes sense. These are the very basic features inside uh, for us just to get started. Let's talk through a couple of things that we haven't covered then. The first being what donor tags are. So donor tags are essentially a way that you can group or create subgroups of your donors. And this will allow you to filter by um, those subgroups within both this manage donor screen, but also in the donation reports and um, to helpfully more easily find donors that you're looking for or better to understand behavior of particular donors. So I'm just going to give you three examples of, of um, different um different kind of donor tags, which we call them, that you might want to use. So if we come to the settings option up here, we can see that we've got these different tags. And we've got some example tags for this organization here that have been set up. Now you may choose to set up different tags based on the way that you want to filter your donors or the way that you want to kind of subdivide your donors. And that's absolutely fine. You can create more than one tag. You can set more than one tag per donor. So a donor, for example, can be both a key giver and a trustee. You can set up multiple and then the filters that we'll see within the reports are very, very flexible. You can tell it to include a particular tag but exclude another tag and so these are quite a powerful way of looking at your donor data which you if you haven't spotted before is worth you just understanding so we've created a few tags in here we've created an 18 to 30 tags why have we done that inside this example organization well maybe we feel like actually we want to know how uh, our younger givers are engaging with giving maybe that's what we're trying to do so actually we've created this tag which we can then apply to our donors and then when we're looking at our donor reports that will allow us to see what's going on we've created a tag called key givers maybe these are donors that actually we want to do more follow-up with or maybe that we want to invite them to a particular event that we're organizing um, and so key giver you might want to mark your donors that are key givers and that will again allow you to um, subdivide within your reports or allow you to very easily find the donors that relate to that particular tag. Statement requested is another example of where I've seen donor tag used. So for many um, churches and charities, they send out annual kind of giving statements at the end of each tax year. Although many churches and charities don't do that. Now, if you don't send out an annual kind of giving statement to your different donors, which is totally fine that you don't, you'll probably find that two or three will still request you to do so so that they can complete their kind of tax returns. For those donors, again, you can create a, a tag called statement requested, and then that will allow you to very easily to just um, just to find, identify the donors that want to have statements. And so when we come to look at the generating donor statements, you can filter just by the donors that want statements. So again, that's another example of how you might want to use donor tags. And then finally, trustee. So when you're um, when you're submitting your end of year accounts to Charities Commission, actually, there's some statistics that you need to provide related to trustees and trustee donations, etc. Again, creating a tag of trustee and adding that tag to any donors that are trustees will very easily 
actually help you find the data that you need within your report. So these are just some examples. I'm going to ask you later on for those that do use donor tags already, how you use them, because I think that's quite useful for you guys to share that with everyone else as well. Um, but also, hopefully, this gives you a bit of a flavor as to how you might want to think about using donor tags to better understand uh, what's going on with your different uh, donor groups. Um, and then we can use that within the reports that we come to. The second thing I wanted to mention before we move on to looking at the reports is that although this module is called Manage Donors, you don't just have to use it for donors. So I know that some organizations use, uh, use this module also to record details of supporters, members, contacts, other people that kind of are engaged in some way with the work of the church or charity that don't necessarily give or maybe possibly don't necessarily give yet. So if you do want to use this module for other individuals um, and you don't have a different way of doing that, then, then this is also an option for you to do. So let's go ahead and look at some of the other tabs within this managed donor donor um, donor screen. So we're going to click on the gift aid declaration tab, which is one of the most important tabs if you're using gift aid within Expense Plus, because one of the key factors when creating gift aid claims, which determines which transactions are eligible for gift aid. One of the key factors is looking at whether the donor has a valid gift aid declaration form. So Expense Plus does this automatically, and I'll explain this a little bit more when we come to talking about the gift aid module. But yeah, you need to be keeping this Manage um, Gift Aid Declarations uh, screen up to date. So if a donor, for example, brings you a gift aid declaration, Bob Jones brings us a gift aid declaration, we need to go ahead and click Add Declarations. So we clicked on Bob Jones, we click Add Declaration. We need to be recording the dates on the declaration so the 20th of March 2024 we need to come in here and add the uh, add the names if uh, add his name in here so we've got Bob Jones and then we've got 99 where does he live and we've got a postcode in here so let's just add um, a postcode in here let's um, go for this one in here so he lives at this particular place we can add maybe a name in here um, yeah, no, we'll leave that blank. Um, so we've added the details in here. We add the start date based on the declaration. Now, the start date may be actually the start of the declaration, but typically when most donors complete a declaration, they'll tick that box which says and back date for the prior for previous four years. So actually, probably we can change this and add take off another four years from that to make that the start date. So the start date is dependent on what the person has ticked or entered on the actual declaration, either the physical form or the digital declaration that they've completed. Now, talking about digital declarations, you can upload a copy of the declaration to Expense Plus. So even if you have a paper-based form, you may choose to upload it to Expense Plus. And actually, I'd recommend you do consider doing this because then you've got everything in one place. You need to keep a copy of the actual declaration, even if you've entered the details of it in Expense Plus. How you keep it is up to you, but keeping it digitally as a file inside Expense Plus is probably going to be your easiest option. So we click Submit. And we go ahead and we can click submit. Now, this is telling us that actually the existing donor doesn't have an address. So do we want to, as well as using this address for the gift aid declaration, also use it for the actual donor? And the answer is yes to that. So we're just going to click submit. So that's created our gift aid declaration in here. Now, if a donor later on comes and says, hey, actually, I need to cancel my declaration. Um, actually, I've I've retired now. I don't I, I can't gift aid. Then how do you do that? Well, you can come in back into uh, Bob Jones gift aid declarations and you can click this cross button here and set an end date for the declaration. The note here is that gift aid works per tax year. So if we're in the middle of the tax year, which we're not, but if we were and a donor comes and says, actually, I've, you know, I've retired, I can't gift aid anymore. It's probably worth just going back to them and asking them about that because you may well find that they have actually already paid enough tax in this tax year to cover all of their donations within the tax year, even though they stopped working halfway through it. And so it is worth just bearing that in mind, um, but you can set the gift aid end dates here. If a donor brings you another gift aid declaration, maybe they've moved house or um, got married and they want to um, give you another gift aid declaration, you can add that very easily in here. Expense Plus will always use the latest gift aid declaration when generating gift aid claims, and we'll talk about that when we look at the gift aid screen. 
So this is gift aid declarations. This is one of the views inside here, and it's very easy to see the gift aid declarations and see who doesn't have gift aid declarations inside this particular view. Let's move on to looking at the communications view then inside this managed donors module. And so the communications view is, is a bit of an optional uh, module, uh, a bit of an optional view inside this module, because you don't have to use it at all. If you don't use it at all, that is absolutely fine. But if you do want to use it, you can find that it's quite useful. So we're going to click on a particular donor here. So we're going to click on Alex Bailey and we're going to look at what, what communications uh, kind of track tracking can be done. So the first section in here is new donor follow up. And there's a brilliant report which we're going to look at in about 10 minutes time, which actually helps you follow up really efficiently with new donors. Now, when you're doing that, you can mark as mark that you followed up with a donor by ticking this box and essentially this then tells that report that you've already followed up with that particular donor. Why is this useful? Well, actually, when someone starts giving to your church or charity, that's a really important point to both thank them, to acknowledge the donation and potentially also to get a gift aid declaration from them rather than waiting three years until they've moved to a different city and actually you can't trace them and therefore you can't gift aid. So actually doing good donor follow up is really useful. And that's why we have a report for it, which we're going to come on to look at in a moment. Now, the follow up action that you do to mark this as complete is going to be dependent on what your church or charity does. So for example, you might send a card and also a gift aid declaration, or you might send an email. It's entirely up to you to decide what follow up action would be the best follow up action for new donors. But this allows you to track whether or not you have done that follow up action. The communication permission um, section in here allows you to tick whether donors have given you permission. Again, what they've given you permission for is entirely up to you. This might, for example, be a mailing list that they've given you permission to for you to add them to. So again, this just allows you to track which donors have given you permission. And then when we look at downloading data and when we come to look on look at the reports, the mail merge data, which is one of the most common ways that people download data to kind of create a campaign inside mail for example, there is a filter for this permission given, which allows you to obviously make sure that you're not communicating with people that haven't given permission. This is an optional field if you don't have to complete it, but it does give you one, a way to track which donors have given you permission um, to contact them. Communication history, then again, this is optional. If you would like to, you can use this, this option to record when you've contacted donors, what's happened as part of that. So you can record in here that you've sent letters, that you've had phone calls, that you've sent emails, etc. It just allows you to check back through, particularly if you're trying to do a really good job with communicating well with donors, or maybe these aren't donors, these are contacts that you're wanting to hopefully become donors, then this is a great way for you to manage and track that inside Expense Plus. So if you want to record a donor uh, communication history, maybe I just phoned someone this lunchtime, I could just come in here, I can say, um, I can say actually it was a call, and actually, um, you know, I can put a uh, chat, uh, chat with, with donor, uh, they were interested in fund raising event in two weeks so i can i can make a note of the fact that they said that they might come to our fundraising event and then actually i might also then want to set a next follow-up action which is to contact them say in a week's time to send them a flyer for that event or whatever the action might be so again this is not you don't have to use this feature but again if you're wanting to try and do a really good job of actually following up with new donors then the functionality is here within expense plus to do this Next tab then is the engagement tab, and this is a really flexible tab. You can uh, uh, kind of uh, filter within this screen where you can um, essentially create engagement steps. Now, let me just explain how this works. So if we go to settings again, we can come in here and we can create our different engagement steps. So what is this about? This typically is about trying to understand more about the donor. Now, there are I'm going to give you three examples of how I've seen this used. Um, and then obviously you can choose whether you want to use this at all or whether any of these are useful. So some churches and charities, particularly charities, use this a bit like their donor pipeline. So this is the journey that they want to take donors on from, for example, 
making first contact with them, so maybe getting them to sign up to a newsletter or email, to then getting them to come to an event, to then getting them to maybe give a one-off gift, to then getting them to consider um, becoming a regular giver. So this would be the steps that they would look or the journey that they would look to take individuals on from kind of being contacts into donors. And so that if that's how you want to use this, you can absolutely do that. And you'd probably want to create the different engagement steps to be those different steps on the journey. So that's one way you can use engagement steps. And then we'll look inside the report that relates to this, how that displays in a second. A different way that you might want to use donor engagement steps is to actually create a step for each fundraising event that you organize, for example. This will allow you then to track and see which donors came to which event. And again, the report that we're going to look at will also show you how much donors have given, etc. So actually, you might want to use donor engagement steps to look at which events donors have come from. Well, there's a third example, which is the one that we've got here, where you might want to record other details about the individual. For example, in this case, whether they've signed up for our kind of newsletter, whether or not they are part of a small group, and whether or not they're part of a serving team. So again, you can use engagement steps however is going to be useful for your organization but these are here so this is donor engagement steps in the settings screen if we just go back a step, a, a step then this is where we can set so for example if we want to say actually um, bob jones has joined the serving team we can just come in here click that and then actually that updates straight away so that's donor engagement if that is useful for your church or charity and then finally let's look at pledges so if you would like to, you can create what's called a pledge event. Now, this might be a special offering that you're doing. It might be a fundraising event that you're doing, or maybe you're just asking people to pledge what they're going to give for this um, for this calendar year, for example. It's up to you to decide how you're going to use pledge events. But um, how do you set them up? You come to settings, you come to pledge events, and then you can add a pledge event. When a pledge event is done, you can deactivate it, which means it's still there. You can still go back and look at it, but it just won't show um, in all the places that uh, active pledge events. Show. So that's how you add a pledge event. And then very simply, when you want to record who's pledged what to a pledge event, you just come into the screen, you select the pledge event that you're interested in, and you scroll down and you add the amount pledged for each of the different donors that have pledged in here. So hopefully that is fairly straightforward. Again, within the reports we're about to look at, you can then compare what people have pledged versus what they've given. And then you can see which donors you still need to follow up to uh, chase up because they haven't actually given what they've pledged. And so hopefully that is useful. So that is a very brief tour of the managed donor uh, model hopefully lots of that you are aware of already some of it you may not be particularly around tagging donors which is one of the most useful features inside here but also around things like donor engagement donor communication and donor pledges which is functionality that we've added in the last kind of 12 months and so if you've not seen that before hopefully that's useful and if you have any questions about any of that then if you just pop your message in the chat then i'll cover the questions at the end OK, so we are going to move on now to look at the brilliant kind of donation reports inside Expense Plus. The donation reports are found in the sidebar menu as well. These are in addition to all of the finance reports inside Expense Plus. And I'm just going to go through the different reports and talk about how you might want to use these, why they're useful and, and, and other details that you might not know. So the managed donor uh, the, the monthly comparison summary totals is a high level report that allows you to spot donor trends across um, across kind of your uh, your your charity's income. And so the first thing to note is that we've created different giving bands where you can see, you know, how many large givers you have, how many smaller givers you have, et cetera. These are customizable. So if you've never spotted this before, there's a customize in the top right hand corner and you can create your own giving bands. So if you like the idea of this, but you're like, well, it never really works for me because we really want to split, you know, the bands into naught to 20 pounds, 20 to 50 pounds, et cetera, then please feel free to go ahead and do that because it will allow you to create your own version of this report. The only note is if you do that, it does it for everyone with access to this report. So you probably want to agree as a team how you want to view this data. But this is very high level data, but very useful for allowing you to spot trends. You can see how the number of donors is changing. You can see how the amount given has changed. And in a moment, we're going to go and have a look and try and understand why the donations total in June has shot up by a couple of thousand pounds. We're going to go and have a look in a different report to have a look at that. And um, you can drill into this report. So if you want to have a look at the three donors that um, make up these three that we can see in the under 100 pounds, we can just drill in and we can see the details of those donors in here. 
Okay, so this is a high level report for understanding trends. Now, maybe as a church or charity, what you're hoping to do is increase the number of large givers that you have. Well, actually, this report will very easily be able to tell you how you're doing with that. Or maybe you're wanting to see the overall number of donors increase. Again, this report is going to show you that. Or maybe the converse is true, actually. You've got some very large givers, which you consider a bit of a risk to your charity, because if they stop giving, then actually your your expenditure budget is going to be in trouble. And actually what you want to do is try and increase the sort of number of sort of middle to higher givers, but not your largest. And so, again, this report is going to help you understand how uh, understand your donor behavior and understand what's happening with your donation. So a very useful high level report, which doesn't unless you give people permission to drill, give away anything about who gives what. This is one of my favorite reports, which is the monthly comparison by donor, because it allows you to very easily understand your data. So remember, we said that in June, donations had shot up by a couple of thousand pounds. We now want to just understand what's going on with that. We want to understand, you know, uh, who's doing what. Are some donors stopped? Are some donors started, etc. We can just scroll down our June column here, comparing two previous columns. And very quickly, we can see that this donor, it looks like they've given a £2,000 gift based on what they've given in other months. We can just drill into this and actually, lo and behold, look, there we go. There's a £2,000 donation in here. So if someone says to me, why has donations gone up in June? Well, actually, I can very easily tell you. And and tell you that actually it's due to a large one-off gift and um you know we should celebrate that but actually that's not us that's not our donations going up by 2k a month and so this is very uh very easy to uh to view what's going on with your um with your different donors across each of your different months remember that you've got your filters across the top of this report as with all of the reports so for example if we want to look at a particular fund we can do if we want to filter the donation method just by a particular method for example we want to understand cash giving uh, then we can do that also donor tags this is where it comes into its own because we can filter this just to our um 18 to 30 year olds if we want to and then look at what's happening with those donors that are give so um, hopefully this is helpful but the manage the monthly comparison by donor i think is a very useful report to be looking at each month now if you haven't already done so you may have spotted that there is something called task management inside the sidebar menu. I'm not going to cover what this module does. There's a brilliant video in our help guide for what it does, but it essentially allows you to set a list of tasks that you might want to do, um, for example, each week or each month. And if you do use that or you have a to-do list somewhere else, then probably you want to make a note to come into some of these reports to go and check or to, to do particular things with them. And so maybe as we're going through even now, you're making notes about, OK, it actually be quite useful to check that each month. And so the task management module, if it's if it's interesting to you, you can use that to kind of create yourself like a recurring reminder to go and go and look at the different reports that we're covering. Donations by date then is the next report we're going to look at. Um, this allows you to view all donations between any dates that you set. I'm just going to go back in time um, and we can select the date. And this allows us to see all donations between any dates. The classic way this is used is to download data out of expense class. And maybe you want to create a pivot table or do something clever with an Excel. This is a great option. This is a great way to just get all of your donations data and download it um, to, uh, to a spreadsheet. There's a download button at the bottom of this report, as you will find on all of the reports. You can download, you can also download to PDF as well. Now, this is individual donations. This will show you all of the different donations. In fact, that we can see this donor is given four times in this period. There's also an aggregated view as well, if that's useful, where it will just combine all of the donations for the same donor in that period. And again, this is quite a useful report if you want to download aggregated donations. And then obviously you can choose what you do with that outside of Expense Plus. Donations by donor. This report shows you, um, for the donor that you select, it shows you what they've given in, in a particular date range. So we can just go and have a look at this donor. We can see that they've given four do donations. This report's quite useful for looking at have you coded it to the right category and fund. So for example, if we were not sure that we coded uh, Alex um, Batley's donations to our general fund and to this regular giving category, this would be a great way to check. And if we needed to move those donations, if you're a finance level user, you'd be able to click in and update where these uh, where these donation transactions are allocated to. So really useful if you want to check something about a particular donor, um, then you can come in here. If you find that you need to move all four of these, this is actually quite a good place to move someone 
someone's donations because you're actually looking at the someone and then you can go and edit the donations. And this is also useful if a donor says, look, can you just give me a statement of what I've given in the last three months, please, or whatever period, this will allow you just to create a single statement for a single donor. This is not the right way to create statements for all your donors, but this could be a useful way to actually provide someone with a statement. Maybe they want to know what they've given or confirmation of what they've given in the last three months, and that would be quite a useful report. The GADS um, donations report, this simply shows you all of the um, all of the uh, income transactions that have been coded as GADS. So GADS stands for Gift Aid Small Donation Scheme. If you're not sure what this scheme is, then do check out our Help Guide article or look, um, look on the HMRC website um, as well. Essentially, anything that has been recorded as being eligible under, under GADS will appear here. And what this screen allows you to do is one, check that the right things have been recorded as GADS. But secondly, it allows you to see it allows you to see how kind of near you've got to the GADS limits. So there is a GADS limit of £8,000 per year. And if you have community buildings, then actually that limit's different. But this report allows you to see what has been coded as GADS um, during during the tax year. So that is a report for GADS. So let's look at some of the don donor reports then. So these are the donation reports, quite useful for understanding donor trends and for other things. The donor reports then allow us to look at some of the things that we've looked at in the Manage Donor screen. So the first one is Donor Engagement Summary. So remember, we could set up our engagement steps, which for this example organisation was about what the donors are also doing in terms of joining a small group, joining a serving team, etc. Remember, you can have these as being uh, different if you would like them to be. This just allows us to see when the donor first gave it allows us to see how they've engaged and it also for the period that we set it allows us to see how much they've given as well remember you can use um you can use the filters um in here as well so if you want to filter by fund or filter by donation method or filter by donor tag again we can just look for our 18s to 30s if we wanted to or just our trustees then this report is really useful at seeing how donors are engaging and so depending on whether you use the donor engagement functionality, if you do, then you'll want to look at this report as well. The pledge summary, I said I've mentioned this as well. So this, we're looking at a particular pledge event. We're looking at the regular giving. This allows us to see what people have pledged versus what they've given. And it allows us to see which, um, which pledges are outstanding. So it also does include people that didn't pledge but also gave, so it allows you to track that as well. If what you're trying to do is to see which people you need to chase up or follow up with if appropriate, then you can click this option at the top here, which says only show donors with outstanding pledges. And if you do that, then you can see just the donors and you can see what is outstanding. And also you can follow up those donors if appropriate. So that is the pledge summary in here, which is a really useful way of following up donor pledges. Generate state donor statements. I mentioned this uh, previously. If you want to generate donor statements um, and you want to generate donor statements either just for a subset of your donors, which is where the donor tags come in, or you want to create uh, donor statements for all of your donors, then this is the screen to do so. If you're just looking to create a single statement, then note the note at the top of the screen, which basically sends you off to the donations by donor report, which we've already looked at. So in this screen, again, you can set filters, you can filter by donor tag if you would like to. If you click the export statements at the bottom, it will allow you to choose which format you want it in. Now, typically, if you're going to export donor statements, you would be doing it once a year at the end of the tax year. Typically, you don't have to do this. And some churches and charities do, some churches and charities don't. It's up to you to decide whether you think this is a useful and helpful thing or not. If you select the to print view, then what it's going to do is it's going to generate the donor statements with a separate page for um, for each donor. And it's going to basically create that in print version. It will create you one file which you can send to your printer and it will print out your hundred different pages with your hundred different donors on. That's that's that option. Or the to email option will generate a zip file with all of the different separate statements in there so that you can email them as appropriate. So um, this is generate, this is export donor statements if that is something that your church or charity would like to do. Donor mail merge data is a really great way for, well, there's several things you can do with this. One of the main things is you can create customized donor comms using, using tools like MailChimp. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to export donor data, including things like email address, name, etc., communication permission, because that's important, um, but also whether they've got a gift aid declaration, how much they've given, the gift aided amount, etc. And this very easily allows you inside MailChimp to not only write a nice bit of communication telling people about your charity or your church and what's happened and what's done, you can also include sent uh, based on based on these different um, fields 
fields, you can add different sentences or change sentences. So, for example, if someone doesn't have a gift aid declaration, you can get MailChimp to include a sentence about filling out a gift aid declaration. Equally, you can include thank you for your giving of, and then you can get it to put in the amount that's been given. So this is mail merge, which um, you can either do in kind of Word or you can do it inside MailChimp or whichever kind of um, communications tool you're using. This allows you to export that data um, very easily and then to just ex import it inside the tool that you're going to use to send if you're doing communications. Again, if you want to, if you're using the donor permission, communication permission field, you can actually get this to immediately sort of exclude anyone that hasn't given permission um, for comms or actually probably the more useful example is actually come in here and say, actually, we only wants um donors which are which have actually said they want a statement and then that filters it down just to the donors that actually want the statement and then we can just send those statements to those particular donors so hopefully that's helpful we're doing very well with this screen we're going to keep going um, and then we're going to come on to questions we've got donors to follow up then so this is if we're using the communications option within the manage donor screen and we're setting follow up actions remember we phoned that person today but actually we need to follow up and send them a flyer maybe in a week's time had we added that in the follow up actions it would show here so this allows us to see the follow up actions see when we've set a follow up date um and then you can basically mark the follow up as having been done when appropriate you can just simply click on this particular donor in this case we can record what happened in that phone call and then we can maybe change the follow-up action down here. So hopefully that makes sense. The new donors to contact, this is a really useful way of seeing which new donors have started giving in the last three months. Now, because the data in the system is slightly older, I'm just going to go back in time a little bit. And um, so we're just going to go back in time and we're going to see, look, actually, we've got someone on here. So we get to see who the donor is that started giving. We get to see how much they gave. We get to see whether they've given since. And we get to see whether or not they have got a gift aid declaration. And this allows us to do the appropriate new donor follow up action for this example, church and charity. You will do your own follow up action based on what is appropriate for your church or charity. Once we followed up, we simply click on here and then we mark that as complete. And then that's what we need to do. OK, so this is again, if you had a checklist of stuff that you do each month, I would probably put this report onto that checklist because it allows you to do um, a timely donor follow up with new donors. The final report in here is the donors without gift aid declaration. So we want to try and help you be tax efficient and to claim gift aid where you can. So this report shows you all active donors that you have that currently don't have an active gift aid declaration. It shows you the amount of unclaimed donations of each donor. It shows you how much gift aid you could get if they tick that, but if they fill that get declaration and tick the box that says you can claim for the past uh, four years, then this would be the amount of gift aid that you could get. And so that's what it's showing you. So this allows you to efficiently follow up with donors that don't have a gift aid declaration. I'd recommend you start at the top of the list because these are worth the most to your church or charity. Now, when you follow up, you can add comments. Um, you can add the actual declaration here. Or if the donor says, I'm really sorry, but I can't gift aid, then you can also click this cross button here. You can set a next review date, which defaults to one year's time, and then you can click submit. It will take them off this report, but obviously add them back on any year's time. So it allows you to keep following up with donors, which has kind of said, no, not for now, but follow up in two years time or three years time, then you can do that really easily within here. So hopefully that makes sense. This has got, we've just gone through all of the different um, donation reports within Expense Plus. We're gonna do two other things before we do the Q&A. Firstly, we're just gonna really quickly look at Love Giving, and then we're gonna talk about gift aid. So Love Giving, if you are not familiar with this, is an online giving platform. Basically, you can create a giving page for your church or charity in about one minute. You can connect it to Stripe, which is the payment processor that will actually physically take the donations. And then you can then basically it's set up. It's fully integrated into Expense Plus. Um, I mention this because if you don't have an easy way for people to give through your website, for example, if there's not a link which kind of says give now, then you might want to consider this option. If you already have an option for online giving, then obviously feel free to ignore this two minutes, which I'm just going to cover what love giving does so you can create and customize your own giving page we're just going to click on this example this is what a giving page looks like to a donor um so in here they can select the amount the frequency they can choose to gift date 
they can enter their details and card number. It's really super easy for donors to give. Now, in the background of Love Giving, you can set up your different funds. You can set whether funds are eligible for gift aid. You can create a kind of display name that your um, donors see. You can even create a URL or QR code for a particular fund if you would like to. For example, maybe you've got a food bank that you want to create a page for, but you don't want to create one for the church. Um, for example, if that's your scenario, then you can do that as well in here. So really easy to set up love giving for um for your church or charity if you're interested in doing that now why would you do that because obviously there are fees related to um to using an online giving platform well the answer is because actually you want to provide ways to make it easy for donors to give so to give you an example of this every summer well not every summer but quite often my family and i go to scotland and we visit a church whilst we're in scotland and we want to give to the church that we visited now, a couple of summers ago when we went, we asked how we would do this, um, how we could do it. We didn't have cash. And we were told, you know, actually, here's our bank details. Oh, and, and we were like, that's great. OK, so we can make a bank transfer. And then what about gift aid? OK, you can fill out this paper gift aid form. And if you post it back to us, we'll make sure that your donation gets gift aided. That That's a barrier to your donors if that is the only option that you offer. We went back last summer and actually they'd introduced um, Stewardship, which is a similar a kind of online portal to this, where we could actually, from our phones, just set up a donation using our card details. We could gift aid it as part of the process and we were able to give in about two minutes. That was far simpler. And so whilst you may not want this to be your main way that you allow people to give, Actually, you might want to consider a don an online donations platform because the, the reverse effect of this is that you just actually miss out on the donation or you miss out on the gift aid. And missing out on the gift aid is going to cost you way much more as a church or charity than the small kind of fees that are associated. So, yeah, potentially do consider this as part of the ways that you do make giving accessible to your donors. Um, I'm not going to talk any more about the Love of Giving module. Um, if you want to find out more, then please do just go ahead and check out the documentation uh, for this module. It's, it's, it's super great if you are going to offer an online way to give because it obviously fully integrates inside Expense Plus. Gift Aid is also inside Expense Plus and it just makes the process flow really easy. Now, talking about Gift Aid, the final thing we're going to cover is the Gift Aid module inside Expense plus and we're going to talk about how this works and how you submit gift aid claims um, within expense plus now the first thing to note is that if you're not familiar with gift aid then i'd recommend that you go to our help guide which if we just go up here i could have got there by the way by clicking this blue help guide button um, at the top of the screen we're just going to go to this help guide and we're going to search for um what donations get included within gift aid claims and so this is a really useful help guide article because it explains what you need to know now expense plus automatically builds gift aid claims for you so gone are the days where you need someone having done your bookkeeping you need someone else to sit there and work out what can be gift aid and what can't you don't need to do that with expense plus as long as you update your donor declaration details whenever a donor gives you a new declaration or cancels a declaration and as long as you record transactions correctly to begin with which i'm sure you will then expense plus does all of the hard work of working out what should be in a claim now the answer to this question is firstly only named donations get included in gift aid claims so if you record something as other income or invoice income then it's not going to get included in a gift aid claim only named donations which of course is what you would want the next thing is the donation method mustn't have been pre-handled outside of expense plus and what we mean by this is when you are recording income transactions if income has come through stewardship or through parish giving scheme or through church suite or through CAF then actually those payment processes will have handled gift aid for you and um, just like you saw with love giving you can enter the gift aid details and in love giving's case expensive plus deals with the gift aid if you have donors that give through stewardship stewardship deal with the gift aid and so we automatically exclude donations that have been pre-handled by payment processes that aren't us because actually we don't want to claim we don't want you to end up claiming on those donations twice next really obviously the donor must have a valid gift aid declaration and this is where the start and the end dates of your gift aid declarations are important we're not going to include donations where the donor doesn't have a valid gift aid declaration next is that it must not have been manually excluded so when you're creating a gift aid 
claim. So we come in here and click create gift aid claim. There's an option here to click cross here to exclude a donation. So if a donor says to you, look, actually you can include all my donations, but don't include that 10,000 pounds, then you can come and manually exclude it. And of course, expense plus is not going to include it if it if it if um, if it's been excluded. And then finally, it must not have been allocated to a fund where gift aid has been set as not eligible. So when you're setting up your funds inside Expense Plus, you can determine whether gift aid is eligible or not. Now, by default, it will be. But for example, if you've got a fund where you're like, sh we should never be claiming gift aid on anything that comes into this fund, then you can just turn gift aid off for that fund. And that just completely removes the risk of someone accidentally uh, recording something, for example, wrongly as a name donation or wrongly um, adding it to a gift aid claim. So actually, it also does look at the eligibility in here. So if, you, if you're not sure what gets what gets gift aid included, there's a really good help guide article which covers that in, in great detail. So how do you create a gift aid claim? Um, I've seen a question come in. I'll cover that in a second. If anyone else has questions, by the way, we're going to wrap up fairly soon. So please feel free to, um, to pop your questions in the chat at this point. So how do you create a gift aid claim then? So inside the gift aid claim screen, you simply come in here and click create claim. The first time you do this, you will be asked to kind of add your gift aid, your government gateway details. So your government gateway details essentially is how you log into the HMRC portal and Expense Plus uses these same details to be able to connect to HMRC. Expense Plus is integrated with HMRC, which means you can fire claims across to HMRC at the click of a button and the gift aid will land in your account typically five to 10 days later um, without you having to kind of do anything else other than just make sure that you have reconciled transactions correctly to begin with. So how would we turn this into a claim we simply click create claim if we only want to claim up until the end of a particular period rather than claim everything that's currently not been claimed then you can just click this radial here and you can say look actually please only claim up until the end of and then you can select date in here and then and, and actually we exclude anything we don't exclude but we just don't include in this particular claim the donations that are after that date you can give your claim a name for example quarter one gift day claim or monthly gift day claim you can claim on any basis that you like by the way things will just sit in here until you claim them so there's no risk of duplicate claiming actually they just sit in here and when you claim them you claim them and then they're not eligible anymore um, or if you don't claim them they just stay sitting here you can also add a gift aid adjustment very easily. Um, so this is where you might have overclaimed on a previous claim. You can just tick this box and you can tell Expense Plus what you're adjusting for. Okay, and then how do you create a claim? We simply click Create Claim, and then you click the button to submit to HMRC, and that's it. So it's really straightforward to submit claims to HMRC. And hopefully, if you've used the claim process, then you, you will know that. The only other tab mention, option to mention in here is there is a view manually excluded donations. And this will just show you a list of any donations that you have excluded, because of course you may decide that you've changed your mind or the donor contacts you and said, actually you can include them. Then you can come back to here and include those donations in here. So hopefully that's helpful. I think what I'm trying to communicate through what we've covered today is that actually Expense Plus is remarkably flexible. And so lots of the options in here are not set. They're there for however you would find it useful and your circumstance. So working out what it is you want to measure, working out how you want to group donors, and then working out, therefore, what reports you're going to get out of Expense Plus. This will enable you to make changes. Um, so for example, if you want to know how your 18 to 30s donors are engaging, you'll then be able to track that through your reports and then make changes and see whether they have any impact um, on kind of your donations, etc. And so it's for you to decide what you're going to track, but Expense Plus provides the tools for you to then be able to track it um, really well. So we're going to stop there. If you've got any questions, please do feel free to pop them in the chat. Also, if you're able to, and you do, for example, use donor tags, we would love to know how you use them. I've given you some examples, but I'd love to hear what you find really useful. Similarly, if you um, if you find any of the donation reports in Expense Plus particularly useful, or they're your kind of go-to reports, or you found something that actually you kind of, you, yeah, it's just the go-to thing that you do, or a nifty shortcut that you want to share with other people, please do just pop this in the Zoom chat and we will share them uh, share them together. Okay, the first question that has come in is, what do we do where there is a couple giving, um, a couple giving, and so let me co cover, I'm not just going to answer your question, I'm going to cover the different scenarios where you have a couple giving. 
Okay, the first thing to mention is that within managed donors, it is very okay for the donor name. So very clearly, I'm saying the word donor, the donor name to be a joint name. It's very okay for this to actually be Alex and Sarah. So the typical scenario is, yeah, couples do give and, and that's brilliant. And so the donor name can be a shared name. The, do, the gift aid declaration name cannot be a shared name. And so the typical example is a couple give, but actually one of them does the gift aiding. And actually, if you work out what you need to pay tax on, what tax you need to pay to be able to gift aid donations, you'll realize that for 99.9% .9 of your donors that are couples, the amount they give, you can simply gift aid on one of them. You don't actually need to split the gift between the two of them to be able to claim gift aid. It's very rare that you actually need to be able to do that. And so the most common thing that I see happening is that shared names are used as the donor name and then one of the couple is used as the declaration name even if they're even if both of them can gift aid actually that's just not needed um, and so that is your best scenario here if donors say to you no 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 actually that's not the case Sam actually I'm Alex and I have to gift aid my share of it and actually Sarah she has to gift aid her share of it then first thing, the first thing you need to know is you shouldn't be adding them as a joint donor. You need to be setting them as individual donors on here because they're going to need individual gift aid declarations underneath them because obviously you're separating the gifts. So that's the first thing to note is that you typically do put couples together, but where they specifically say, I can't, and you've checked with them the reason, because actually the reason might be, oh, we thought we wouldn't gift aid would be a problem, in, which typically it isn't, then you can split the donor couple into two individuals. Then when you're reconciling um, income from that donor, you won't actually be able to use the automated feature, which allows you to quick match um, donations, or you can use that, but it will reconcile it against one donor. Um, you'll need to then split that amount out against two donors. So let's just see if we've got any bank transactions in here. Yep, we actually have got some in here. Now, usually you quick match your um, donation income and that works really nicely in here. We can just quick match the whole lot. But actually, if you have a giving couple, then you will actually have to come in here. You'll have to click the, um, you'll need to click the mixed income because of course it's not just from one donor because you're explicitly saying they have to be kept separate. You click mixed income and then obviously you can have two lines in here. You can have one line for one donor, one line for the other donor. This is extremely rare. The number of charities and churches I see do this are, are minimal because actually the need to do it is, is typically very small because you, you don't need to do it because actually one of the donors will typically pay more than enough tax to cover the declaration. Okay, let's just go back and look at the questions and see if any other questions have come in. If you have got any um, thoughts on uh, donor tags, by the way, please do please do share them or anything that you found helpful that you want to share. Do just pop it in the chat. Let me just have a look on here. If someone gives you a gift aid form that covers a period that you've already claimed for, can you back claim um, well, there's two answers to this question. The first answer to the question is, are the donations you're trying to back claim inside Expense Plus? So if I've been using Expense Plus for one year and someone fills out a gift aid declaration and says, yeah, I can back claim for the whole four years. The first thing to note is three of those years aren't on Expense Plus. So you're going to need to create the claim for those other three years using whichever system you were using previously, or more likely submit a manual claim via the HMRC portal. So the first thing is Expense Plus can't know about what it doesn't know about. For the one year that is in inside Expense Plus in this made up example, then yes, if you add a gift aid declaration inside the managed owner screen and set the date being the start date being four years ago, um, it will actually only go back one year because it obviously doesn't know about anything before that, then yes, when you go to the gift aid claim screen, it will automatically include in a claim the amounts that can be back claimed. So the answer is yes, it can back claim. The answer is no, it can't know what it doesn't know. So hopefully that helps answer that question. Okay, I think I don't have any other questions. If anyone does have anything else they want to share or ask, please do feel free to um, to add to the chat. Otherwise, I think we will wrap up five minutes early, which was also the plan to begin with. So hopefully you have found this session useful. We will send out a recording later today. Um, so yeah, you can catch up on anything that you've missed. You can share it with anyone um, that...